I was walking along, minding my business, when love came and hit me in the eye. Flash, bam, alakazam, out of an orange colored sky. 2015 for me has been both a year of massive hype and massive disappointment. So many games that I've just been dying to play finally got released or even finally got announced, hence Fallout 4. But here's the thing, all the games that I've been really hyped to play just ended up being a total letdown and didn't really live up to the hype, whereas on the other hand, every game that I've only been mildly interested in or not even that excited for at all have managed to be pretty damn good or completely exceed my expectations. So in comes Bethesda and the pathological liar Todd Howard with sweet little Fallout 4. Okay Todd, lie to me. Cause your track record for telling the truth, not so good. It, it just works. Skyrim ruined my image of you and anything Elder Scrolls four years ago. And I've always been more of an Elder Scrolls guy until about two years ago when my friend forced me to play through Fallout 3. Prior to this, my only experience with this series was seven years ago when Fallout 3 got released, and the only thing my 16-year-old brain could think of was, It's just Oblivion with guns! So I really only played through Fallout 3 in New Vegas about two years ago, after being an Elder Scrolls fan for half a decade, and basically switched sides after completing Fallout 3 and New Vegas. They've still got that Bethesda feel, but I find the setting and general gameplay to be more unique and fun than Elder Scrolls. My expectations were low, and my hype was set to a bare minimum. But despite that, I'll admit I was still kind of excited to play the game, even though it was yet another product of the Demon of Deception. I was expecting a Bethesda game. And by golly, this does not feel like a Bethesda game. It's weird, because it's not shit. It's like the least Bethesda-feeling game I've ever played. Todd, you fucking liar. There's no way you made this game. You don't make good games. Fuck you. Okay, so you know how aiming guns in Fallout 3 just felt clunky? Or how controlling movement and jumping was like trying to fit broken Lego blocks together? Well, not anymore, because I don't know what they did to this engine, but the game just controls and handles so well. Aiming down a scope doesn't make your character suddenly contract Parkinson's disease. I can't believe I'm saying this, but yeah. As long as your weapon doesn't take 10 seconds to equip, the gunplay just works. But that doesn't mean that everything else works, because when you look close enough, that Bethesda charm, it's still there. But goddamn, they did a really good job hiding it this time. But hey, it's Bethesda, so they had to patch in those glitches eventually. You can't expect to play a Bethesda game without any glitches. It just doesn't happen. It, it can't happen. Out of the 2,760,812 alternate realities, there is not one where a Bethesda game does not have glitches. It is both theoretically and physically impossible. No, but for real, hilarious glitches aside, the game is fun and controls really well. Everything about this game feels like a general improvement in comparison to Fallout 3, New Vegas, even Skyrim. It feels like a modern game, and not dated like every other Bethesda game did because of fucking Gamebryo. It feels like an actual shooter now, because, well, Fallout isn't really an RPG anymore. It's been stripped down and simplified to the point where the only aspect that hasn't been completely removed or changed is your special. Fallout 4 isn't an open world RPG, it's more of an open world FPS with minor, tiny RPG elements. And that's not actually a bad thing. The new perk system, while simplified, is something I actually like a lot. Yes, skills and perks have been merged into a single perk sheet, and it's extremely reminiscent of Skyrim's skill system, which I despised, because in Skyrim, they just completely removed your base stats, like strength, agility, intelligence, and you only had that shitty skill tree. You had to use things to get better at them, which means you could never really experiment with everything. In Fallout, your special directly affects which perks you can get at a lower level. For instance, in my playthrough, I maxed luck and got Ricochet, the highest luck-based perk, at level 2. That's 
really unrestricted in comparison to other games' skill sheets, and it makes character progression feel far more personal than Skyrim or Fallout 3 did. That's only the case with your person stats, though, because the dialogue options in this game... I just... Oh, th this dialogue wheel stinks. I don't want to play with this Mass Effect console bullshit. The options always boil down to the good choice, the bad one, the joke one, or more information. It sucks. I hate it. And I had to get a mod to fix it. I also had to get a mod that let me craft ammo. Something that should have been in the game in the first place. Bethesda didn't make New Vegas, but they still took other features from it. Oh, and someone better make a mod that removes this stupid critical meter and replace it with a flat critical chance, because if there's one thing I can absolutely not stand about this game, it's the goddamn critical meter. Mods aside, I will give Bethesda credit for the fact that they hired more than five voice actors this time around. Albeit, you still hear those staple Bethesda voices, but hey, they got George Clooney, or Tim Allen, or someone who sounds freakishly like them. I was even kind of interested in what everyone was talking about this time around, despite the fact that I roughly knew what was gonna happen. I mean, technically your son is the I'm villain if you oppose the Institute, but I sided with him. Mostly because, well, fuck the Brotherhood in this game, and I'm a sucker for transhumanism stuff, and, well, Institute's just cooler. And speaking of cooler looking stuff, Fallout actually has a colorful aesthetic this time around, and the overall graphical quality of this game is way better than 3 or New Vegas. There is still a slight green filter over everything, but it's barely noticeable as Boston and the Commonwealth still look great. I didn't even find that many low resolution muddy textures, only missing ones. The only graphical problems I had besides missing textures is the massive CPU bottleneck the game engine has with shadows. When I was running through Boston with those things on high, Wow, my frame rate tanked. I pretty much had to just turn them off in order to get 60 frames. And everything else they added, from the new armor system to power armor actually feeling like power armor, is awesome. And the settlement building and defense stuff, even though raider attacks never really happen that much, is something that I managed to go full autism with. The best way to sum up Fallout 4 is that it's just good. And I was not expecting it to be good. Hell, I wasn't even going to buy it but a friend of mine just gave me a copy for free. It's not a groundbreaking, flawless, or absolutely incredible game, and neither is it terribly awful or utter shit. It's just a surprisingly fun game that I ended up sinking over 100 hours into. And with DLC already in production, it's more than likely something I'll come back and play again, if not multiple times.